About this time last year, we brought you Guilty Without Proof. It was the story of the brutal killing of 13-year-old Maurice Purify. Now, Maurice was killed right here in the middle of Horace Street in central Toledo. He died on June 15, 1998, and two men, Wayne Brady and Carl Willis, were convicted of that crime, though to this day they say they still had nothing to do with it. Let's take a look back at that case, an investigation that has given renewed hope to two men who have spent the last 22 years in prison. Man, what's up, I didn't do? Oh, what's up, I didn't do? On January 7, 2000, after 26 hours of deliberations, a jury convicted Toledo and Dwayne Brady and Carl Willis of the murder of 13-year-old Maurice Purify. Anger was one of my emotions. I'll be sitting here telling you a bold-faced lie if I told you I wasn't angry. Carl Willis is an innocent man, but I'm not responsible for Maurice's death. What we do know is that Maurice was found in the early morning hours after leaving his girlfriend's house on West Woodruff Avenue. He was shot multiple times, his pockets were turned out, his shoes were found beside his body. After months of looking into the case, Eleven Investigates has been able to find numerous problems with the prosecution's case against Brady and Willis. Police identified two suspects early in the case. Terry Lake and Aaron Pettis were identified in a search warrant as the men suspected of shooting Maurice, once in the chest and four times in the head. A day after the killing, a person called the tip line to say they overheard Pettis say that he had killed the teen. And a day before the killing, a witness identified Maurice as a person seen climbing out a window of a home that was burglarized on East London Square. Lake lived at that home. He and Pettis were interviewed and released once Pettis passed the polygraph. Carl Willis told us that he begged the police and prosecutors to give him a polygraph. Well, Carl did ask if he could take a lie detector. Well, we were going to give him one. So why did you give him one? Then? We don't. Sometimes we do and sometimes we don't. You gave one to Aaron Pettis. I had forgotten about the lie detector test on Pettis. There were no witnesses or any physical evidence against Brady and Willis. According to what they told me, they didn't even know Maurice, except from around the neighborhood. Willis says he was shocked when the police came looking for him. But when I stepped out, my brother said, what did you do? I said, I ain't did nothing. He said, they looking for you. I said, they looking for me. I said, they can't be looking for me, I ain't did nothing. So the detective said, there he go right there. And he grabbed me. It turns out that the break for the police came in early August when a caller said that Travis Slaughter had admitted to the killing. The video of that interrogation of Slaughter was referenced in court, but police and the prosecutor could not produce it for 11 investigates until we got a lawyer involved in our request. And upon viewing that interview, I could see that Slaughter denied knowing anything about the case for more than five hours. But then a story began flowing out of him as he broke down. But with no other evidence, the grand jury refused to indict Brady and Willis. It was only after prosecutors say they got cooperation from Slaughter's friend, Shondrea Rayford, that they were able to get an indictment. Grand jury testimony is not public, but Rafer told me that the prosecutor was trying to get her to say that she overheard the men talk about the killing. And she later went on camera with me to say she never had that information. A story that the detectives made up. They had, that's, I never knew anything about the case before the detectives came with a story. And then I was supposed to get on saying and, and say something that I didn't know nothing about. During the trial, Rayford stopped testifying, was held in contempt of court, and jailed for 30 days. She told me that she simply didn't want to lie on the stand, and that she believes Brady and Willis are innocent. But her refusal to continue testifying made a big impact on the jury. 
I'm sorry, you don't forget everything you heard. I mean, she's the only one that said these guys were friends, they hung out, and then she left. And, you know, I, I believe our assumption at the time was, well, obviously she's scared of these guys, and that's not why she's testifying. Now, since reading everything, you know, that you were able to provide me with, you know, 20 years later, that wasn't the case. You know, that was definitely a false impression on our part that I think definitely didn't help them. The jury foreman says he was also frustrated by the lack of defense. Family members contacted by 11 investigates say they were willing to provide alibis for the men. In Willis's case, his then girlfriend says it was her birthday and Willis would not have been roaming the streets with slaughter. He was babysitting with her, she says, but the defense, they called no family members to the stand. There was no defense. You know, there, there was no defense, and, and, and that's a lot of, I think, why we found it the way we did. During my investigation, I discovered that Willis's lawyer never took another criminal case and that Braddy's lawyer billed 8.8 .8 hours for investigation. I have spent hundreds of hours on this case. And then Willis did have firearms on his person. Oh, something I didn't do! Oh, something I didn't do! After 26 hours of deliberations, the jury convicted Braddy and Willis on January 7, 2000. The convictions were so unexpected that lead detective Bart Beavers sent a letter to prosecutor Julia Bates commending her team for accomplishing the unthinkable. In the weeks after the airing of Guilty Without Proof, I continued to dig and continued to meet resistance from the prosecutor's office. My request for case files was eventually met, but none of the original case files were kept, only files from later appeals. Now that's a clear violation of county record retention policy. You can't destroy files from a murder case. Thank you. But something completely unexpected happened around that same time. Travis Slaughter reached out to me. Police say that Slaughter admitted to masterminding the killing of Purify. He was given a deal, not only on the killing, but also an unrelated rape to testify against Braddy and Willis. He was released from prison in 2016 and told me that he's been running from the truth ever since, afraid that prosecutors would send him back to prison. But a prison letter to Willis that 11 investigates uncovered shows that Slaughter was remorseful for lying at trial. All three men admitted to being friends but had a falling out in late May or early June, and all three men told me that same story. It was a fight over clothes, and if true, it blasted a huge hole in the prosecution's theory that the men were partying on June 15th before killing young Maurice. After the fight over clothes, Willis says Slaughter showed up unexpectedly. Travis came to my mom's house, and he kept on trying to lure me to the alley. And I told Travis, like, I'm not going to Alley. I don't know what you want. I don't know what you're saying, what you're trying to do. But you need to talk to me. Talk to me right here. I had two people convicted, man. They In fact, Slaughter told me I that he had a gun one. and was ready to kill right. Willis. Right. And the loss of Braddy's friendship was even more devastating to Slaughter. The two were like brothers, but Braddy says he was done with the friendship at that point. I told him me and him could, could no longer hang out like that no more because leading up to that point, you know, which made me have him go get a job was he kept stealing from me. So you hated him at that point. Yeah. You were really yeah. angry with him. Yes, and you I wanted was very to upset. Get back. I was, you know, at 17 years old, I'm like, I'm gonna get him. Slaughter says that as he was being grilled by detectives, he hatched a plan to get back at his former friends. I was hungover. I was exhausted. I was hungry. Um, I was tired, drained, and I just wanted out of there. But more than 20 years later, he says it was all lies. For to the best of your knowledge, did Wayne and Carl have anything to do with the death of Maurice Purifier? No, they did not. No, Wayne and Carl did not have anything to do with the killing of Maurice Purifier. 
There are words that Braddy and Willis have said over and over during the past 22 years. You know, I would like to send my condolences to the family, but I would like them to know that Wayne Braddy and Carl Willis is not responsible for their loss. Jury foreman John Cry now says that the men deserve another chance. Over having read back through everything, seeing the recanting and testimony, um, seeing some of the things that weren't presented back then, uh, some of the evidence that's missing, you know, finding out about a lot of different things. Uh, I personally w would love to see them get another opportunity to plead their case. At some point this year, Wayne Brady and Carl Willis are hoping to return to court to prove their innocence. If they do make it back to court, we'll be there every step of the way. Reporting in Toledo, Brian Duggar, WTUL 11.